Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modeler. My name is Ian, this is my Kitchen Table where I'm doing modeling. So this is part two of my mini-series in how I paint and weather armour models. And for the subject we're using in this um, series then is Hobby Boss's 135th scale uh, IDF Nagmahon uh, armour personnel carrier. Uh, in part one then we left up, I know it's quite abrupt in the end but I didn't want to go on too long in the episode, so we left up um, where we've put in the coat down of dark black green on the lower surfaces of the hull, the wheels and the inner surfaces of the side arm plates. Um, leaving us in part two to put colour down on the tracks and then we want to actually start putting the Sinai Grey mix on to the wheels, lower hull and inner side skirts. Um, and it's also a good chance for us to look at basic uh, ways we can shade and highlight the model and give shadow to the model um, by practicing on the running gear um, before we move on to the upper surfaces. Now, in realism, we're not actually going to see much of the work we do once the side armor skirts are on, but it's a really, really good opportunity just to start honing with skills, um, practicing in areas that you're not going to be so visible and that are going to be weathered afterwards with you know washes, oils, pigments. Um, so it's a good opportunity to try and get those skills started and, and honed in areas that are going to be covered over um, so you're not actually going to see just a huge amount of it. So enough waffling from, from me now, let's get the camera down on the table, get the compressor fired up and we can start putting some paint down. Okay so we're down on the table and um, we're going to start with painting the tracks because we want to get them painted and out of the way um, before we well, paint them out when dried before we have to start working with them to get them on. So we're using our custom mix um, whole bread, whole red, uh, I think leather brown and a touch of NATO black to get that kind of chocolatey dark rusty colour which will look nice for nicely oxidised all steel tracks. Now the airbrush we're using is a Hansa 381 um, it is a double action airbrush but it is not a traditional push down for air, although you can push down, it's not the way it works. It rocks so you pull back, gives you air and then as you pull back it engages the needle and then pulls the needle back so you get air and needle. Um, it maybe doesn't have the fine control on the air like uh, a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity or Evo but it's a really really good workhorse airbrush for putting colour down and it's also really good to hold your skills because you're not going to worry about how much air and how much paint you're just pulling back and adjusting the air of the tank or if you have a Mac valve at the Mac valve and it lays down a beautiful smooth finish so anyway let's get that now I've got a bottle here this is just Tamiya X20A with Tamiya Retarder in um, and it's probably about one part retarder to the rest of 99 part um, thinners. A bit through, make sure we've got good flow, which is fine. And then we're going to have to get the paint in and start laying down colour. There we go, that's fine. Give the paint a little shake and a stir. It's always good to stir your paint. Shaking won't get the pigment that is settled on the bottom of the jar off so always good to stir now this is because this is a mix of mine it's already pre-thinned so I don't know the ratios of paint to make the color I just mix them together till it looks right um, but there'll be at least 50% thinners to neat Tamiya paint so I'll mix up the colour with neat paint and then I'll thin it by 50% with the thinners and then of course we're going to put a touch more in the colour cup just to help it go on, it on its way so you're probably ultimately looking at about 60% thinners to 40% paint um, Tamiya paint is really good stuff 
because it will thin right down and the beauty of Tamiya uh, acrylics is they'll obviously thin with Tamiya acrylic paint but they also thin really really well with um, Mr. Leveling Thinner uh, which is a lacquer thinner. So we'll start on the inside, let's move that one out of the way and quick coat dusting it on. Now the beauty of these tracks is they're already a rusty colour in the plastic so if we don't actually get uh, every little area it's not going to be a huge problem because we'll get it covered with the weathering. Now this 381 airbrush has a 0.3mm needle and nozzle setup and although it's a Hanzer airbrush they're actually made by Harder and Steenbeck so it is actually a really really high quality airbrush and it's on a par with any high end airbrush you'd like to throw at you. Right, so you'll notice as I'm doing it, I'm constantly turning the tracks and we're spraying paint both directions so we don't get any unpainted areas. Pay particular attention as we go and you'll soon see the colour going down, although they're similar colours. There we go. So there's a painted track, there's an unpainted track. So it's a really nice base rust colour for us to then go on and weather it. So let's get the second set done. And we'll paint flat on like that. Get that raised edge. Now the other beauty of thinning your paints is you can spray at a lower air pressure. So that means you get less overspray, you get more paint on the model where you need it, less paint in your air, um, and obviously you need to be running an extractor where you can, or and not or and where appropriate face coverings. Okay, we're happy with those. Nice even coat of paint all round. If you look on here you can see there's still a little bit showing through so we can just come back in and touch that up. There we go. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with that now. Right, that's tracks out of the way and we have used, well I filled this colour cup up, so it's about half a colour cup full of paint to paint both sets of track runs and then we'll just paint them out. And we're good with that. Right, let's get the airbrush cleaned out and we'll get the colour in for the top of the paint. Right, so slight change of plan. Before we get onto the lower hole and the wheels, then I actually thought we'd need to paint um, the the rubber tire section of the wheel. Now, the reason I want to paint this first is obviously we're going to use a grey colour to represent the sun sort of bleached rubber. So we've got um, a nice grey, mid grey in the colour cup, which is if I can find the paint. So it's Mr. Colour. Um, and that's RLM 75 grey. Um, nice light grey so you get a good contrast between 
uh, the cyanide grey and the grey of the tyres. Now, I don't know if you can see this, so I'll point your brush here, but see that in the light, I get that in the camera. There we go. You can see that there is a slight rim in here which actually needs to be cyanide grey. So if we paint all the rubber tyres, then we can assemble, once they're dry, we can assemble to the wheels and then we can paint the centres of the wheels, which will at the same time paint, um, if we use a circle template, we'll paint the, the, the rim on the tyre and that will finish the wheels in one go. Um, a lot easier, a lot quicker, and it's pretty much the way most armour painters nowadays paint armour wheels. So we have a number to do because there's one on each side and there is six wheels each side of the tank so I'll let everyone else do the math because I don't have that much brain power to do it when we're live on camera. So um, same again I'll just clean the airbrush out we've thinned the paint 50-50 roughly um, and we're spraying roughly at about uh, probably laying it down about 15 psi. So we'll just get a bit of tissue. We'll just spray there. I think we can actually jack the pressure up a little bit. Up to 20 psi. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Now we don't need we don't need to paint the inside of the wheel because that's going to be glued. But we can quickly dust around the rim there. There's really no easy way of doing this. Um, we want a good coat on there, and it only really needs one coat. And then we just turn the wheel in our hands. Now there is a rubber seam down this tyre, but the way a lot of these wheels and tyres were, were cast is they actually did have rubber seams down them because they cast onto the rim so I'm not too fussed about it as well as that as I said before this is this is um, this, this is going to be hidden with the side skirts so we're actually not going to see it if you really want to speed it up you can Stick them on my finger ends. We could carry on doing that, but and this is where the butt comes in. There is another way of doing it. We have already base coated the wheel. What we could do is actually just Slip the rim, the tyres onto the wheels. Okay, you're not going to see down in there, and if you do, it's going to be grey colour anyway. So what we will do is we'll just quickly assemble all the wheels, and then we'll just paint that on. Doesn't matter if we get any overspray in there because we're going to put the top coat on. So give me a second. I'm going to quickly assemble these all together, and we'll be back. Okay, so. Last one, just so I show you quickly how I'm doing it. So pop wheel on the outside, or tire on the outside, tire on the inside, seat them, time you're extra thin, and then just carefully run that around one side, drop the wheel, and then same again on the front side, just wick it around and it will naturally find its way in to the join and then if you try and turn the tyres you'll feel them gripping on the rim. Perfect. So, 12 wheels, 6 a side done. Now this is just a block of high density styrene foam used for house insulation. Poke holes in it, um, bamboo, barbecue skewers, cut to length, perfect holders. We've also got the drive sprocket and front eye of the wheel. Right, so let's get on and paint these things. Um, this is the ones we painted off, so you can see it's a really neat job, works really well. Um, let's get on and paint 
this. Now, the beauty of putting this on a cocktail stick is you can actually turn it whatever angle you want and then just back and forth motion. There we go. It's painted. So you hold it still and move the airbrush around. Now you'll have to excuse the compressor sound. It is just what it is. It's the quietest compressor I've got. It's got a couple, that's the best one. So, same again. Now make sure it's reasonably square and then just get the paint on, run it around like that. And you can walk it around like that if you want. Until you're happy with the level of paint that's on. Or you can just rotate the wheel. And obviously with this airbrush, the more you pull back on the trigger, the more paint you're going to get. So, around the outside. Doesn't matter if you're getting grey on the wheel itself, because it's all going to be painted anyway. Getting this in focus. So, around the outside. And it doesn't matter if it's slightly blotchy in the finish, that all adds to the tonal variation. And as I said before, you're not going to see just a huge amount of this because it's all going to be hid underneath our skirts. Now if you want to get a wider coverage, just pull your airbrush back a little bit. As long as your paint's thin properly enough, it won't dry up instantly and you'll end up with a nice smooth coverage. Now as I said before, I use um, Tamiya Retarder. In the X20A, that's the acrylic retarder. And that does go a long way to help slow down the drying time a little bit and get that nice smooth finish. And the beauty of having the wheel holders in is as soon as you finish them, just pop it down, pick up another one. Or if you don't want to do that, you can take them all out and then just pop them back in as they're done. A little bit damage there where I picked it up, the paint is still wet. Obviously, start from the inside, work your way out. Now, I know this might seem a little boring watching somebody paint wheels, but um, I want to film the whole lot because I want to show you just how quickly you can actually paint a full set of wheels. Right, there we go, 12 wheels painted. Now I'm just going to stop the recording a minute. I'm going to tip out the paint colours. We'll load up with the cyanide grey because that is the next colour we're needing. And I'll show you how quickly it is to paint the rims and then we can move on to the lower hole and the side skirts. Okay, so I've got the paint. And what we're going to use 
is Tamiya XF55 deck tan. Don't need much of it. Probably just a brushful. Mixed it in, happy to go. And give it a spray through to get rid of the, all the colour and we'll practice on the side skirts. Okay, I'm going to highlight the bottom edge and that's it. There you go. So you can see that one as opposed to the one we've not highlighted. Definitely a lighter edge. So come in again, do this one. Just focusing on the bottom edge. We don't want to go too far up. Just here. If we go to move the vehicle itself, then we just want to focus on the highlight areas. So, I want to be centre of the wheel hubs, and then just there we go. Just the highlight. And that just heightens that colour. Go back, then go. Same on the other side. So. Go back, then go. Perfect. And then finally, we want to do the wheel centres. Now we want to mainly focus on the centre hub itself because that's the bit that's going to be the most exposed to the sunlight and the easy way to do it is just grab your holder with all the wheels and individually paint in the highlight you don't have to do it in one coat you can do it in two coats Go back to where we started, second coat. There we go, that's it. Highlight of the centre hubs, perfect. Right, I don't actually want to do any more highlightings on this, I'm quite happy with the level of finish we've got. What we actually need to look at now is getting the tracks back on with the wheels and actually thinking about joining some of this back together. So let's just pause a moment and we'll come back when we're ready to do that. Okay so minor technical hitch, the battery went flat in the camera so I've had it on charge for a little while and I've done a little bit of painting just to kind of get ahead of myself but I have kept one wheel and paint mask. I can just We'll just get that in focus. There we go. Right, so this is how simple it is. Take wheel. Now I always do the back side first, personal preference. And you want to set them, find them the find the circle that marries up with the the rim size we're doing, and just paint the rim. Now, you don't want to be housing down loads and loads of paint, you just want to put down a nice even layer and then you want to pull that away and there you go, you're left with painted centre and the grey rubber tyre and it's quite stark grey um, but with all the washes and stuff we're going to put on it will turn it down but you do need a bit of 
ver tonal variation between the greys and, and the sand sort of Sinai grey, otherwise they'll blend together and you can't see where the wheel stops and the tyre starts. So once that's done, flip it around. And this time, all I tend to do is I work around the outside edge. And then I focus on the centre hub. And I let the overspray get the rest of the wheel. I don't mind if there's some shadows left in the recesses. It just helps with the overall effect. And there you go. That was about a minute's worth of painting and you've got a painted wheel. So, so easy. And like I said, even most model armor models I know use these templates and with our kits like Meng, you actually get a little photo etch wheel template now in the kits. So moving on from there, we want to look at painting the lower hull. Now I have given the hull on the left side a coat of paint. Needs finishing, but that's the basic look we're going for. We've got highlights and shadows all built together, and that's from a very thin, um, almost translucent in places layer of paint. Uh, the highlights are where the paint has become quite opaque as the layers build up. And if we want to keep on building up the layers and get a higher highlight, then we want it to dry for a little while. We'll just go back in and add a bit more paint. Now focusing on the areas we want to use to define the overall shape. And then if we want to blend it in, just pull right back and then put a very dusty layer over the top. So let's just set this up, we'll turn this around to the other side and make sure I'm in frame, got the light on it I will show you how I've done it I've also painted the front glasses plate with a bit of mottling I haven't done any of the rear plate yet um, I'm not going to worry about painting this yet because we'll do that when we paint the whole upper hull what we want to do is get the lower hull painted so we can actually get the tank back together and ready to go so let me just check, I've got that focus, that's in focus, I want that roughly about there. I'm going to move them out of the way because we don't over spray on them, they're ready to go. Yeah, good. So, we come in here, and we start anywhere you want. Now what I tend to do is I, we're only on about 20 psi, and again I just focus on the highlight areas where I want the most colour to be. That'll be these individual panels and any raised corners. And then what I do, center the wheels, I'm relying on the overspray to fill in the blanks. I like these two big knot bolts. That area there, that area there. Again, so you want to run the ridge, that high edge there, and then with a kind of bobbly motion, fill in, and you're almost painting a V, which is just highlighting the shape of the bow, the suspension unit. There we go. Now it doesn't matter if you go overboard and you put too much paint down. You see, you're not actually going to see much of this. Once the wheels and the tracks are on and the side skirts are on, but it's a really good opportunity for developing your airbrush control. So when it comes to painting the upper surface, you know A, how you want to lay the paint down, and B, you've got good brush control. Now the other thing to remember is these return rollers had rubber wheels on them. In reality, when a tank gets painted, they don't paint around the wheels, leaving the rubber tyres, they paint everything. So these things will have been painted with the top coat. So it doesn't matter if we paint them with the top coat, because we're actually doing what um, ordinary army squaddies did when they painted. So, now we're happy we've started with that. What we need to do now is we need to just change the angle on painting that, and we want to start laying in paint along the 
check obviously it was still in focus. We want to lay paint along the underside of the track guards. So you see how I'm doing that little bobbly motion. You see how the streaks are forming. And all I'm doing is an up and down modern donkey pipe motion. trick with painting like this is keep the airbrush moving so you don't lay paint down in any one spot it's naturally uneven and then to blend it all together you just lay a nice thin fine dust misty coat over it and again in reality the highlights are going to be in the areas where there's no equipment and you're going to get shadows around all these bits of equipment so what we want to do is go back in here and we want to get the highlights in these areas here okay, around the tops of the suspension units and around here on that front plate and then down around there we want to highlight in here and you want to leave the darker shading around the equipment because that gives you a forced perspective it forces the shadows into the area of work now we'll turn it over and we'll come into the bottom and we'll highlight in there so a lot of color in there because you may actually see that in there and then around there too Touch up a bit in there, put it in the center. There's your suspension arms. And then we want to color the bottoms of these arms here. A little bit down the side. And then we want just a nice pull back. Yeah, and blend it all together. So we're happy with that level of colour. Just put a bit more colour on there. And then we're going to focus on getting here. Now, the beauty of the underside is nobody's going to see it unless you've got on a mirror or people pick it up. So we can use this to practice. Uh, I think I might have a bit of a problem with my airbrush because it's spitting a little bit, but we can look at that later. So. And you see how I am just doing random sort of bobbling, bouncing, Trying to keep it very random. And this is a similar principle to black basin. And it will just build force to build in highlights and lowlights. And give you total variation. There we go. Any areas you're not happy with, a little bit more paint now. So finally, there we go. We'll get this. Now, what we want to do here is there's going to be sunlight coming down in here, so we do want a bit more colour on there, just there. Okay, same on the inside there. That's it, but we do want to leave some shadows in there because obviously it's going to be naturally shadows. I want to highlight that plate there and I highlight that plate there. This one here, this one here, this one here. And then we want to work our way around all this stuff. Pull back and lay down a light coat. 
blend it all together. And then because we want to make sure we get underneath the toe and the lifting hoops, we just want to turn it around get a different angle so we can get in there and we can get the underside of the hooks. And we get the tops of them and we'll go from the angles on the side and get the sides of them. Good, I'm happy with that. But we've still got side skirts to go. Okay, so side skirts, similar thing. We want, I mean, realistically, it's all going to be cyanide grey, but it's a good opportunity to practice shading because you know, no one's going to see it, but we know it's going to be there. Now, in reality, there'll be very little light up here. It's going to be up to close to the track guards and most of the light and the colour should be down here. So if we pull back and we come in here, we want to stop here because we've got shadows with the the two supports. So paint in between them. So we'll try and keep a reasonably straight line. Get that in focus, there we go. A reasonably straight line. And then what we want to do is we want to just go in here. And again, it's just not a bulky action. We want to put most paint down on the bottom and then soften it up to the top to build that shadowing at the top. And if you notice how when you bobble it, you end up with little fine flares of almost wisps going up to the top and puts in artificial streaking, all done with your airbrush. So when you actually come to do streaking with oils or enamels or however you fancy doing it, you've already got a natural sort of progression in there and then your streaking coming on top of that will enhance it. And again, if you want to just blend it, pull back, put a nice dusty layer over, speckly dusty, there you go. You've got highlights along the bottom, shadows along the top, and then forced shadows where something's going to be in the way cutting out the sunlight and that was so dead easy and really quick to do and it can be done all over the tank now you can do on the top it'll actually be the other way around sun will be coming down here less down here so if you start at the top just lay it along there and then do that simple same here Similar situation here on the front, and then realistically, you just want some faded shadow colours under here because it's going to be closest to the ground, it's going to get covered in dust anyway. So, there is the side skirt, get that in frame, see that nice shadows on that one. Uh, I've already painted this one to get ahead of ourselves, very similar finish. Now, if we wanted to just force the perspective a little bit more to get the highlights just to pop that a little bit more especially in the center of the wheels and that what we can do is we can actually lighten this paint up a bit more so I'll just go and get a paint and we will come back to it okay so we're back and we're going to start assembling the model now the tracks will only go on one way and if we look at If we look at where the depressions are, we can see how they're fitting around these top rollers. It doesn't matter which side you put them on because they're not left or right hand sided. Um, they will go on either side. What we do need to do is just gently tease down or break, as the case may be, the return rollers just to get that, just to get the track into there we could if we wanted to nip off one of the uh, guide teeth so that's a bit rough so we just gotta take the time now if I remember rightly I probably broke a couple of the uh, 
return rollers, getting them off. Yeah, it is a tight fit. Yeah. But we can just use a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, get them glued back on. I think one side came off better as the other. Of course, when you're doing it for camera, it's always more difficult. Right, pop that one in. So what we're doing is we're just lifting them away gently with the plastic and then guiding the track in behind it. Oh, so. There we go. Nice to break three out of four. Hey ho. However, tell me extra thin is our friend. Now, the first wheels to put in are the dry sprocket, which I've actually forgotten to paint. Would you credit that? Right, and we're back. <laughs> so there we go. Just goes to show, unlike any other modeler, make mistakes, have accidents. Right, so I've now put a layer of paint onto the drive sprocket and I've also repaired the return rollers with the drop up tiny and extra thin. Now this is the again slightly tricky because you want to get the guide horns in the centre of the drive sprocket and when you've got big hands like me it can be a little tricky. And this is also where I pray that I've got the tracks on the right way soon find out. So we'll see if the holes line up. Now, there is a bit of movement back and forth. Before I commit to clip on that one home I want to get the return roller or front idler wheel. We want to get that in as well. And if we roughly line up where the hole is going to be on there, that should give us the clearance we need to get that. Now we can just best way to do this is to actually start slightly below where we want it to be, clip it in to the guide horns and then let's just work it onto the shaft. Now one thing I will say is you can see there because I thin my paints, they do take a little longer to dry and because I'm building this reasonably quickly for you guys, I've put a thumbprint on. Thankfully it is just on the lower part of the hole and I can fix it. Now this isn't so easy to be honest with you. It seems to be holding up on something, what I don't know. It should just Flipping and pushing. There we go. So that's the front. So that's the front idler on. There's the rear drive sprocket on. We'll make sure that's pushed on. Onto its axle. There we go. Perfect. Now we know the tracks are virtually in place. We've got a little bit of play on the tracks. You see that there's a little bit of play so we can adjust them to where they need to be and where they need to sit. And then the return rollers that need to be repaired, they can be glued up next to the track where they ought to be. So the way the track's going to be on them and everything's going to be fine. Put a touch more glue on that fellow there. Can even glue it to the track if we want. It's not hurting. Now, now that we've got this bit done, that's the most difficult part getting that done. Then all we need to do is take the wheels one by one, and I always start from the outside and work to the inside, and pop them onto the axle, making sure that we've set, seated them onto the, the guide horns. And there we go. So one at the back, go to the front. This of course will set up the tension for the rest of the wheels so we shouldn't have to worry about too much tension on manoeuvring the track because these two wheels themselves will get the track to the right distance away 
from the remaining axles. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the other side. So you're holding it from the front and you're looking to the rear where the actual axle is. And you just want the gentle pressure, work it in. It will go. There we go. Pop it in. Work it down. Make sure everything's seated at home properly. Next wheel in. So on and so forth until you have all six wheels on that side done. And usually the last ones are easy to do because the tracks run at the right length. Everything lines up. Now, quickly, we'll check that all the guide horns, uh, the return rollers are up where they ought to be. We can just check our alignment of the tracks. Everything's sitting neat and flush. Wheels are on. Everything's painted. And you can see the highlights where I painted have matched into where the wheels were going to be. And with the rusty looking tracks, it all looks really good. So give me a couple of minutes, I'm going to put the other side together and then we'll look at getting the side armour plate on. Okay, so I have taken the time to fix in these armour plates and I'll just go through how I do that on this side with the following. So you've got two spaces here and here and then you've got a fastness here, here and here. And they correspond to the two spaces on the bottom there and then the fasteners on the top and they should just lock in quite nicely like that and then fit in on the bottom now there is a bit of manipulating needed so what i did was I put a drop of glue here yeah, a good drop of glue. And then taking that, I placed those two spaces into the sockets on the side armour skirts. And then whilst holding them with my thumb on the bottom, just gently, I then guided the top into its locating points. And when I was happy and it clicked home, and we thought about applying some glue. Obviously, if you don't get this just 100% right, then they won't go in. But when they do go in, they tend to grip quite well. And once they're on the way home, then we'll apply some more extra thin to each joint, which will help to get them located home as the glue wicks around. I'll put plenty on because we do want a good strong bond. So pushing each one in there. Now we know they're in on the top so we can just flip it right over and then we can look at the bottom and we can see whether or not we have the support arm in place and where it's not in place just take a pair of tweezers and then maneuver it until it locks home and you'll know when it's home because you'll feel it click into place now the beauty when you get both side skirts on you can just hold them and let the glue go tacky so whilst that's gluing up set that down. We've got the last one of the side skirts to put on. Now these have just been made as per the kit so half of it's down and half it's up. On another model I've put one side wholly down and these fit on just like that. So 
they blew. Yep. Yep. And here. And they're really good fit as well. So once they're all in, they literally do just click into place. A gentle nudge. Wait for the extra thin to bite, go off, and then they're in. And if you want, you can always just tap in a touch more glue just to make sure there's plenty of glue to make a good strong bond. And that is it. Touch and hold, let the glue cure, and it's all together. Okay, that is going to be all for this episode, building wise. So I'm just going to put this down and then we'll change the camera angle and I'll have a quick discussion about how things have gone. So there we go, that's part two. Um, we've achieved quite a lot. We've got all the running gear done, got all the side skirts on and we're ready to move on to part three which will be masking obviously what we've already painted priming the upper surfaces and getting all the top coat down and doing all the highlights shading and everything ready for us to move on then and go for detail paint and then we're not aware it i hope you liked what you saw um, if you have any questions or comments please put them down below i always take the time to read anyone that wants to comment and i appreciate anyone takes time to comment and i will answer you back um, if you like the video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you like what you see and you want to see more please consider subscribing um, i'd like to grow the channel and appreciate everyone that does sub to me so until part three guys take care have fun and stay safe <laughs>